All right. Hi, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started. So today we'll be talking about the embedded SDK 2.0 in Amazon QuickSight. And we'll be hearing from one of our senior engineers, John, today. OK, thank you. Let's review the agenda for today's learning series. First, I'll give you a quick introduction to QuickSight Embedded and the benefits it provides you and your end users. We will then discuss the different types of embedding offered and how they fit into the architecture of a typical application. We will then review some of the benefits and new features released in version 2.0 of the embedding SDK. Lastly, we will end with a demo of data point callback, a recently released feature through the embedding SDK. We built QuickSight Embedded to simplify the space for customers. You can now deliver insights on demand embedded in your applications. You can use QuickSight to seamlessly infuse data-rich experiences in your products and applications. With QuickSight's serverless architecture, you can get high performance at any scale. No need to maintain a separate analytics infrastructure for your product. And you only pay for what you use with our low cost consumption based pricing. Let's review the different types of embedding that QuickSight offers. One click embedding is a quick and easy way to start integrating QuickSight in your application without having to write any code. Two different authentication strategies are offered. Enterprise embedding can be used to embed a visual or dashboard in your internal application for registered users of your Amazon QuickSight account. You do so using the embed code that you get when you share the dashboard or from the embed visual menu in QuickSight. You don't have to call a QuickSight embedding API. Instead, all you need to do is copy the embed code from QuickSight and use it directly in your internal application's HTML code. Public embedding can be used to embed publicly shared dashboards or visuals in your public application, automatically granting access to anyone on the internet. For example, a local government website sharing a public dashboard containing COVID-19 data from within the community. API-based embedding requires using the AWS SDK QuickSight client embedding APIs to generate a one-time use embed URL, but it provides you more control over the end user experience. There are two types of embedding APIs. With anonymous, the end user does not have a QuickSight user and session tags can be used with row level security to restrict access. Anonymous embedding can be used to embed dashboards, entire dashboards in your application offering your end user the same functionality and interactivity as they would if viewed through the QuickSight console. Individual visuals that exist as part of a published dashboard. And lastly, the queue search bar. Registered users, on the other hand, do require a QuickSight user. But in addition to supporting dashboards, visuals, and queue search, it's also possible to embed the entire QuickSight console making it possible to offer QuickSight authoring tools as part of your application, rather than in the context of the AWS Management Console or in a standalone website. Let's take a quick look at an end-to-end -end workflow to try to better understand the communication between components involved in making API-based embedding possible. First, the user opens the application on a client device. The client application requests a page from the application server. And at this point, the application server might use other services to try to authenticate the user or retrieve metadata used when rendering the page. For example, the application server in this example uses the QuickSight client in the AWS SDK to obtain an embed URL, which is then passed back to the client along with the initial page HTML. The QuickSight embedding SDK is then used to configure the embedding experience for example, trying to uh, specify where on the page the iframe should be mounted, passing parameters, or registering a message handler to be triggered when the parameters change. After the iframe has been mounted to the page, the static assets are fetched from Amazon QuickSight servers and returned to the client, and the embedded experience begins loading. Finally, after loading is complete, the end user 
is shown the experience and they can interact and we can respond to uh, their interactions. The QuickSight Embedding SDK is a JavaScript library that allows developers to integrate analytics functionality into their products and applications using API-based embedding. Version 2.0 was rewritten using TypeScript in the latest ES6 syntax, offering developers a modern approach to managing asynchronous workflows and increased productivity through type safety. In addition to the productivity benefits, there are also other improvements made to the info, debug, and error message messages to assist during development or debugging production issues. The lifecycle and embedding events provide you with more insights into the end user experience and can be used to monitor interactions within the embedded experience to create integrated workflows with your application. Lastly, state persistence and bookmarks are now supported to help registered users maintain and access preferences across embedding sessions and context. While BI provides data and insights, we also wanted to enable users to take actions based on those insights. In many cases, that action is to kick off or stop a process in another system. For example, you may want to move orders or shipments from one fulfillment center to another, or adjust workloads between service person personnel, or adjust the time threshold to getting initial patient triage based on insights from the dashboard. Instead, instead of having to find a disjointed way to enable those actions, QuickSight's, QuickSight will enable developers to kick off workflows in other applications by building custom experiences triggered by data point interactions. Imagine a user is doing XYZ on the dashboard. The developer can build an experience to hook into those events to trigger custom actions and continue the user journey in another part of your application for, with contextual data. We will provide callback events in the QuickSight Embedding SDK, such that you, the developer, can, can subscribe to events when a reader clicks with a data point on a visual, for example, clicking on a cell in a table. This allows greater integration of QuickSight in your application to support seamless workflows and improve the end user experience. Before jumping into the demo, I first wanna walk through just a few code snippets to help you better understand how the demo application is configured. I'm using a simple Node.js ex Express server along with the AWS SDK client. You can see up at the top how I'm configuring the AWS SDK client as well as my Express app. I've configured a single post route um, that's used from the client to be able to generate anonymous embed URL for my request. The server endpoint is called from the client and it passed metadata in the request body. For example, the dashboard ID, the visual ID, uh, namespace, and account ID. And this returns the embed URL to the client so it can be used uh, to embed the visual. The demo is a single page application built using React. When the application is initialized, the root component sends a post request to the Node.js server endpoint shown previously and renders a loading indicator until the embed URL is returned. Once the embed URL is returned to the client, it is passed as a prop to a child component and is used within a use effect hook. The snippet shown here is the code that is ran within the use effect hook. The create embedding context method is exported in the embedding SDK version 2.0 and provides methods to be able to embed resources, for example, visuals or dashboards, and stores a reference to them so they can be accessed in other areas of the application. Additionally, the context is used to, to centralize communication between QuickSight and the parent application using a zero pixel iframe appended to the body element in the DOM. Using the embed visual method found on the context, I'm able to start rendering the embedded visual on the page using a ref 
that references a div element returned by this component. The with iframe placeholder property is new in the SDK, and when enabled, will render a default loading indicator as the visual is loading. Additionally, a custom component can be provided, removing the need to create custom loading logic. The on message handler is invoked when the embedded experience receives a message emitted from within the QuickSight context. The content loaded event is fired once all the visuals on the page are loaded, or in this instance, when the single visual is loaded. This is a perfect place to dynamically register a custom action. As you can see, I'm using the add actions method that exists within the visual. I am registering two custom actions, one with the flag record name and the other with the inspect record name, both of which are using the callback operation, which is only available using the latest version of the embedding SDK. And when triggered amidst the callback operation invoked event, which can be intercepted using the embedding SDK on message handler. For example, in the above snippet, I have an else if block that's looking for this event name to be fired. And once it's fired, I'm using a flag record method, which is persisting the data in React context so it can be accessed in other parts of my application. For example, in this new snippet in the top right, I'm using use flag record, which retrieves my React context, or in this instance, the flag records. And then I have a use state callback, which is parsing the flag records, pulling the data point out of the flag records, and then using the raw values within a format email method to be able to generate a dynamic template for an email. Since the embedding SDK 2.0 is built using TypeScript, IntelliSense provides great insights into the properties that exist on the data point giving you the confidence you need when building these complex workflows. As you can see, as I'm working within the data point, I'm getting IntelliSense to help me figure out what properties exist on the data point. Here's the React application that corresponds to the previous code snippets. Once I reload the page, a request is sent to the Node.js server, which will generate an embed URL and is used in the application to embed the visual on the page using the embedding SDK version 2.0. The default loading indicator will be shown until the load event has been emitted. This table displays the total monthly sessions for each account compared to the previous 30 days and calculates the percent difference between the two. For the purpose of this demo, I need to review this table and identify accounts that I would like the technical account managers to reach out to so they can investigate the decreased usage further. For example, I wanna take a look at bracket, but first I need a bit more information. When I click on one of the cells in the row, a menu appears showing two items, flag record and inspect record, both of which correspond to the name of the custom actions dynamically registered and shown earlier in the code snippet. Since I need a bit more information, I'm gonna go ahead and click on inspect record. Doing so will emit the callback operation invoked event, which contains the data point and custom action metadata. For example, the custom action ID, which is used in the application to conditionally generate the embed URLs for three KPI visuals, render the modal, parse the account name from the data point and embed the visuals, passing the account name as a parameter to filter the data. After reviewing the account details, I've decided that reaching out to the TAM is not needed. So I'm gonna go ahead and click close and continue reviewing the list. Radial stands out with an almost 43% decrease in sessions. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a closer look at the account details. As you can see, the data shown is different when compared to the previous example. 
This time, I'll go ahead and click on the flag record button. And doing so, we'll open a new modal with the two, subject, and body pre-populated using the raw values in the data point emitted in the callback operation invoked event. For example, last sessions, this month's sessions, and the percent difference between the two. Clicking on send will send a post request to the Node.js server so the email can be sent. As you can see in the bottom left, the email has been successfully sent. This concludes the demo, and I hope that this highlights some of the advanced functionality that can be achieved using the embedding SDK version 2.0. Thanks, and happy coding.